in part one and part two of this three-part series exploring the idea of the once saved, always saved belief. Uh, we talked about Matthew and 14 verses or 14 portions of scripture I looked at that made me wonder whether, you know, the once saved, always saved idea is really true. And you have to come to terms with that yourself. Even if you once believe in once saved, always saved, or if you don't believe in once saved, always saved, we need to take a look at what the scripture says. Now we're going to go on to 1st and 3rd John and see what it has to say there. Now these scripture is not exhaustive. I just picked a couple of, of uh, books of the Bible that I knew had some scripture about once saved, always saved, things that made me raise my eyebrow, and I'm sharing it with you now. If you find that you have some other ones, I'd love to hear what they are. So anyway, let's take a look at 1 John. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 and 6, it says, This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. So that portion of scripture talks about if we continue to sin, we have no fellowship with him. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 through 6, it says, We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. If a man says, I know him, but does not do what he commands, he is a liar and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know that we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. So this is saying that we need to walk as Jesus did if we want to say that we are in him. That means if we obey his commands, that is one of the prerequisites, if I read this correctly, as to what we need to do as Christians. So I look at this stuff and I'm thinking, well, it's not just believing. It's also being righteous and following Jesus and not sinning. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 24 through 25, it says, See that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. If it does, you will also remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is what he had promised us, even eternal life. So if it remains in you, then you have eternal life. If what you've learned remains in you, then you have eternal life. That's the way that I read this. But what if it doesn't remain in you? I'm wondering if someone can turn away from Christ and not have this remain in him and not have eternal life. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 16, it says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of the sinful man, the lust of the eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does comes not from the Father, but from the world. So this continues to strengthen the idea that we need to obey him and not follow the world. And I'm wondering if this whole line, this whole string of thought comes to the same conclusion. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 29, it says, If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. So it's showing us that if we do what's right, that means that's, that's the indicator of us being born of him. And can we go to heaven if we're not born of him? In 1 John chapter 3, verse 6, it says, No one who lives in him keeps on sinning, and no one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. That, to me, is a very powerful portion of Scripture. To me, it means if we continually sin, if we habitually sin, then we're not in him. We have no place in heaven. Oof, very scary. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 9 through 10, it says, No one who is born of God will continue to sin. Because God's seed remains in him, he cannot go on sinning because he is born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. So this one continues to say that if we continue to sin, that we're not of him. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, it says, This is love for God, to obey his commands, and his commands are not burdensome. So it's saying that we really need to obey his commands. This is what all of these things are saying. We need to obey his commands. And it sounds contingent on our eternal life to me. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 18, it says, We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God um, keeps him safe, and the evil one cannot harm him. So these continue to say, those who are born of God does not continue to sin. I know that we all sin and we make mistakes, but I think that they're talking about here is habitual sin. Sins that you continue to do even though you know they're wrong, you continue to do them. And this is the last verse I'm going to cover today. And that's from 3 John chapter 1 verse 11. Dear friends, do not imitate what is evil but what is good. Anyone who does what is good is from God. Anyone who does what is evil has not seen God. Yeah.
So that's pretty self-explanatory to me. So let's go on to our question of the day. These verses talk a lot about the conduct of a believer. Do you believe someone could accept Christ and later turn to a life of habitual sin? If not, why not? If so, then what does that say about their salvation? If you have a thought on the matter, I'd love to hear from you. You can email your response at search at ktfproductions.com or respond with a text or video response wherever you saw this clip. Also, if you have a topic that you'd like to see covered on the show, please let me know. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure about once saved, always saved, or about the idea that you can lose your salvation. But one thing that I feel pretty confident about is that this portion of scripture in 1 John, that whole thing that I was talking about is basically saying that if we habitually sin, that we don't know God. And if we don't know God, that makes me wonder if we are saved. Remember in one of the previous episodes when, the, when God says, that if when you come to him and you may have done all these different things, but when you say, Lord, Lord, he'll say, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoer. And these it's saying, these people never knew me. And that's kind of what I think is talking about when it says habitual sin. If you continue to sin, then you don't know God and that you never knew God. Does that mean, though, that they really never knew God and that they were never saved? And that is a question that I continue to ask. So I'd like to hear from what you have to say. I'd like to also think about what it means to believe, because I think that that might be one of the crux of the matter as well, because we know that if we believe, we'll be saved. But what does it mean to believe? Is it just the idea that we know who Jesus is? You know, the Bible says that the demons know it, they know who he is, and they shudder. So we need him, of course, better than them. So not only do we need to believe in him, but we also need to follow him. To me, it seems like salvation is a two-part thing. First, we need to accept that free gift, which everybody agrees with who is a Christian. But the second part is to try to live as Christ, because if we don't, then he's going to say he never knew us. It says, if you love me, you will keep my commands. So I think that a believer has to not only accept that free gift of uh, salvation that Jesus died for us on the cross about, but he also needs to remember that if you believe, what believing means, I think, in the Bible is also that you need to take on that mantle, pick up your cross and follow Christ, which means that you need to shed the old person and grab the new person and put them on. In short, I think that it's talking about the idea that once you become a believer, you have to do those two things. And if you neglect the second one, then you might think that you're a believer. You might think that you're saved, but you very well may not be saved. Anyway, that's what I think. Love to hear what you think. And I hope you join me next time for another episode of Search With Me.